Well, let's talk about the TS-284 from Tucson Knives. This is insane. Okay, this is a crazy knife. And when I first saw this design out there by my buddy Wong, and I like his knives. I do. I like his designs. But when I first looked at this, I go, that is stupid as crap. Okay? You got a pocket clip. I mean, once I figured out that's what it was. Pocket clip. It's not a subframe lock or some weird. It's a pocket clip on both sides. Hello? What the hell? Who does that? Nobody does that. Nobody does that. But he did it. I don't know how he convinced the owner of Tucson to do it, but he did it. And it's an interesting knife. And you know what? I I, I passed on it. I, I did. I passed on it. Unfortunately, have you ever passed on a knife and then later you got it in your hands for some reason? And then you go, what was I thinking? What was I thinking? First of all, this is a big knife. So I like big knives and this is a good size knife. Second of all, it ticks a lot of boxes. It has an interesting style to it and it's a front flipper, by the way, and it's really pretty easy to front flip. Look at this big old choil up here. Now, you only got about an inch and a half of blade cutting length, but it's, it's get over here, come here. Okay. And this is 14C28N steel. Oh, baby, is she sharp too, you know? Um, at least that's what I wrote on the bottom. No, I didn't write that. The guy I got it from did. Uh, but he goes, sometimes I screw up and I put bids in on eBay. And then I end up forgetting to cancel the bid on the other one when I get the first one. And so I end up with two. So thank you for doing that because I never got in on it and whatever. Um... But I got this from him, and I paid him 85 bucks. and I'll tell you what, I'm happy 85 bucks all day long into tomorrow, for sure, as far as I'm concerned. that That's definitely uh, worth 85 bucks. Uh, this is titanium, uh, 14C, 28N blade. Uh, it's kind of a light stone washy, isn't it? You know? Uh, but, wow, just interesting. Look at the lockup on here. We'll, by the way, we'll, we'll disassemble this. Look at that. What's that, 25 to 30? Now, this is a thick dog. It is. I mean, just look look at kind of the blade. It, maybe that might turn you off. Because, it. I mean, if you kind of look at it, that that blade proportion to the overall thickness of the knife is kind of odd and hold on let me throw this on without hitting the pocket clip let me get north of that at least uh right here okay yeah 16.1 0.63 that's thick as a brick um oh 0.14 only 3.6 uh millimeter blade stock wow i'm, I'm kind of surprised 0.14 okay so yeah i mean if you're going to make it 0.63, you might as well put four millimeter there. Help your proportions out. But it's not a small knife. So if you want to look at, you know, your standard EDC, blah, 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 three and a half inch blade, eight and a quarter overall. Well, there it is. But, ooh, baby. Let's flip it over. Take a look at this way. Yeah, boy. So it almost looks like a para three doesn't it uh woof. that is small now let's let's take let's take a big boy because the fish the swordfish that is a nine inch knife and guess what we are brothers in arms are we not so let's put the tape to it because i'm telling you this has got to be a nine inch knife. i measured it out and i go yeah um well Cutting edge is three and a half, as amazing as that is with that huge front choil, but you're at almost four inches by the time you hit the bolster at 100 millimeters. And then overall length is eight and three quarters at over 22 centimeters. So this has got to be one of the larger knives that Tucson has made. And I'm surprised he could convince the owner of Tucson to do that as well because he he kind of likes to stay with a smaller 
overall length than than nine inches and he did stay under nine but wow now I, of course i don't trust this blade because it's a front flipper so you can't put your finger up here and release okay because this is all got to get cleared to drop but so i'll i'll point it downwards because uh, I don't want it to swing around. It just touched my thumb a minute ago when it swung down. So, no. You, you kind of get your own technique when you want to go fidgety with it. Because, woof. And then you can middle finger flick it. So, you can do that as well. And we will take it apart. I'll see how the innards look. But, okay. So, let's get back to the pocket clips. So, obviously, I haven't tried it in the left-hand pocket because I'm not a left-hand pocket guy. I'm a right-hand pocket guy. But you know what? And I thought this wouldn't work at all. So, if you own one of these, you tell me how it went with you. Because, actually, uh, it's kind of amazing. Um, this is relatively springy here. And it actually went in my pocket pretty well. And you would think there's no way because... This should sit on top of the scale, so it just slides right in. But actually, this slid in my pocket pretty damn well, which was kind of surprising. So, okay. Um, you know, I thought, and there's some knives that are murderous to try and get the pocket clip to slide over the lip of your pocket and that kind of thing. This is not one of them, at least not for me, my own experience. And believe me, I've carried this a few times because it's one of my favorites. Here you go, lanyard hole to the back. Of course, you've got, this is all titanium, by the way, titanium uh, liner lock, I guess. Um, it's always funny when they do this. Because with me, it's just kind of a little overlay, and it's really a frame lock knife, but no. Okay, and you can see these screws through here, right? Well, Tucson, as well as nobody else I know, puts in, first of all, very few others ever really do a titanium liner lock knife, okay? And then if they do... Uh, they don't put a hardened steel insert on that to titanium liner, but here they have because that's what Tucson does, which is amazing because I, I don't know, whoever's missing out on Tucson, I'm sorry, you're missing the parade, baby. Um, these knives are quality knife. I, I mean, right here, there's no reason why this is not $220 except it's 14C28N which ain't garbage steel, but it's a user steel, so it's not a super steel. I get it. So, you know, uh, maybe down the road, and they're, they're consistently doing this, they'll come out with a 14C28N, and then later, you guys who are Tucson freaks will know, it'll come back out in either S90V or M390, usually M390. So a lot of guys will get the first one, and then later the, the M390 comes out, and they give up the 14C because they want to keep the M390. Okay. Ooh, I have been carrying it, haven't I? I got me uh, another beautiful thing about titanium. God, I love it. Hold on, let me blow on it. Okay, there's another scratch. I mean, uh, that's just what drives me crazy. I'm, you know, sometimes I just feel like giving up on titanium. I'm going to go G10 to hell with it or my Carta or something because it does drive me crazy. Because when you use them and carry them, they're going to get battle scars. That's that's the way of the world, my friend. But, you know, you know, G10 knives or, and this is that silkworm, giant silkworm from Harns. Or, you know, this is, of course, uh, the Keen Natter. But this is my Carta. See? Uh, no. That's not going to scratch up real easy. Not that that can't ever get scarred or marred, but not as easy. So, uh, yeah, that's that's the thing. I know. But when they're brand new, they look good, don't they? I like the color on it. I'm, I'm happy with everything. It Oh, God, hold on. Why didn't I get the scales over here? Oh, she, she a heavy duty. She a heavy duty. Ooh, 6.14. Okay. I'm kind of surprised it's not heavier than that, tell you the truth. 174 grams. 
Yeah, I mean, it it feels, <clears throat> how do we say this nicely, substantial in the hand. Yeah, it, it definitely feels all of that all day long. Now, let me check this. Hold on. Number eight. Number eight. I don't know. No, that's a number six. Number eight. Okay. So number eight's all the way through. There's even some titanium knife people getting big money for their knives. They've still stayed with number six body screws. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, that's BS. Uh, they ought to all be number eights. It really saves you a lot of grief um, when it comes to, especially if they lock those damn screws down too hard. That's insane. Um, ergos. Ergos are fine here. There's plenty of room for hands. There's plenty of room for hands. And especially you want to move forward here. You got the whole back 40 open. I mean, that's just incredible. And, you know, you can get with that tip. And you got a big old tall flat grind. Piercing, slicing, especially slicing, looks great. And you got nice working finish on there. I mean, that stone wash and stuff. So I like that as well. And the cutaway is nice because you can finger flick it open. Then you got the jimping here and kind of a thumb ramp thing. And it's aggressive enough. You know, you can definitely feel that. It's going to grab at your at your skin layers there. And nice machining. Just a lot of things going on here with the machining on these scales. Not contoured necessarily. They're flat up here, but uh, wow, done well. And then it kind of buried this pivot. So it will be interesting disassembling this and see... What, uh, what comes apart and what opens up when we take this outer titanium scale off. But yeah, it, it's thick in the hand, but you know what? Oh, you got a handful, but it feels comfortable. Reverse grip. Oh, it feels good too. And where's my balance point? Ooh, I got to back it up. Yeah, because the handle's heavy. The blade's not that heavy. And there you go. There's your balance um, you know, uh, because of this, this is right. This favors the right hand when you have um, a lock bar. Okay, so that's oriented for right-handers. But the pocket clips, ambidextrous. The flipper, ambidextrous. So you're, you're good with that. It's reasonably ambidextrous, this knife is. Backspacer is not anything fancy, but it's there and it helps complete the look of the knife. And check this out. The pin. Wow. It's way back there, isn't it? Whew, baby. And does that work both ways? I guess it does. Uh, can't feel the blade through here. Design flow is nice. I mean, you got to excuse this. It's intentional. So it can be a front flipper. Uh, blade to handle length. I can't touch the tip, but so it's all it's all in there though. Huh? You know, I like the design actually. I like this knife so much more than when I saw it. Especially I saw it first on Wong's Instagram. And I'll give you all that Tucson stuff. You know, the online sellers on eBay. There's there's two of them. Tucson Knives and then DWIN99. Those are the two main guys. There's a guy selling on Amazon that I think is an authorized guy. And then the Tucson store on AliExpress where you can pick them up once they've kind of exited the eBay scene. All is not lost. So... You know, keep vigilant on that. And White Mountain Knives carries them as well. So always check there because you can use LTK as a discount code for 10% off. So don't forget that. You get it on Amazon, no 10% off. You're going to pay taxes and you're going to pay shipping, possibly, unless you're a Prime member or something like that. So uh, think about it. All adds up, doesn't it? Yikes. But that... That is, that's a hell of a knife right there. And, and it is a handful, but I like it. I like the feel of it. Uh, I'm really, I've really grown fond of this. So I'm keeping this one. I'm going to put it in my, my Tucson keeper drawer. I'm going to have to do a Tucson keeper 
video showing you my keepers. I better get a bigger damn table, though, that's for sure. Cause, and that's going to be a hell of a long video. It might have to be part one. It might have to be a mini-series or something. Ah, damn it. When you get the fever, the Tucson fever, you know, you're doing the Tucson two-step. But this one, yeah, this is just so fascinating that he did this from this design standpoint, that he thought about doing this, and you go, you've lost your mind, but somehow it worked. Somehow it's worked. Um, I never said anything about detent, really. Um, it, it's it. I find it very appropriate, and I think most of the two sun knives, I find the detent approach pretty appropriate because on this one, it's a front flipper, so you do not want a real stiff detent on it, and especially if you want to do middle finger flip. Uh, let me see. Hold on, hold on. Swing out, swing out. Ooh, she tried to bite. You a vicious little thing, aren't you? Okay, that was easy to snap. I bet I could snap it this way. Hold on. Yeah, okay. So it's probably about a 4.0. A lot of the flippers are 4.5 to 5.2. This one's a little softer than that. Uh, but it needs to be so it can keep that kind of uh, easy to flip open. And I think you saw me kind of bounce it off the stop now of course now i didn't but you know yeah so it's it's a fairly light detent but you know ain't gonna just come open yeah you gotta give it some shot so um, yeah i like it i i think it's where it needs to be well i ain't coming at the pivot from the front so let's do it from the back and very minimalized look there isn't it but it's such an interesting design um i'm 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 interested in seeing what this thing's all about put my finger on the back side of that screw on the other side and it came right off okay good good these usually come apart like a fine-tuned machine they really do i don't know i mean i don't know if tucson oems knives for anybody or this or that but they sure do a hell of a good job on their own knives. Okay, so these are going to kind of fall all the way through, aren't they? Um, let me see what I got here. Can I just take this apart? Or do I need to take that pocket clip off? No, I don't. Okay. So that's a big area where they've weight relieved this thing. It's pretty damn clean. Okay, D-shape. You can see the flat spot on the back of that pivot. Hardened steel insert on... Oh, okay. Never mind then. I guess that was... Okay, just the body screws and the pivot holding that on. Okay. So, and there's the screws for the lock bar. And then pocket clip coming in from that side. So, no big deal. Okay. Um... And she's wet, but it ain't my fault. I didn't put that lube on there. And then that's where the blade stop goes. So that's down and back, isn't it? Quite a ways. Fascinating, though. It's Otherwise, it's pretty clean and no heavy, goopy lube. You know, it's pretty light. Okay, now, of course, we got a steel... Oh, we got the steel washer, but on the other side, you got the racetrack, so... Keep those bearings running, running good. And the bearings, by the way, are not these demure little tiny, teeny tinies. They are sizable. Multi-row would have been nice, but these are reasonable and they seem to be working pretty well. And then, of course, D-shaped pivot, as you can see the flat spot here. So it's flat. And that's that right there. So as it reaches across to the other side, it fits into the flat area there. Keeps everything from turning. More bearings and a steel washer, which if it's difficult to take it out, just use a magnet. Just like that. Yeah, a lot of weight relieving on this side, isn't it? On the underside of the presentation area. And yeah, this will come off very easily right here. 
and probably if you don't watch it, these will just fall out the backside here. So, uh, okay. Well, not a lot involved here because there's no like inside screws and all that. You just take the outer screws off and everything comes apart. The, the outer scale, this one comes off the frame. So you're good. Um, but I was looking at it and just a thought popped into my head about, you know, wouldn't that be interesting to bronze this, this underside, and then have the green and the bronze? I think that'd be outstanding. And then the pocket clip in bronze, or you could do that in green, and then the backspace are either in green or bronze. I just, I think that would be handsome, as opposed to the silver and green. But uh, yeah, I mean, it lends itself to a little bit of custom work. Not like you have a lot of money in it, that's for sure. And let's put it back together. So we've got this. And uh, where are we going to end up with that squared off? The squared off, oh, shows towards the back. So we got to rotate it like this. Right like that. Okay, now we can put, uh, we got to put our racetrack in. Our washer with the groove on the one side to greet the bearings and let's throw the bearings on actually while we're at it yeah nice hale and hardy bearing ring that's for sure but it's it's a it's a heavy duty knife so yeah it probably needs to have that oh and by the way you know the ever dangerous detent ramp that uh, ever famous not dangerous uh, detent ramp that they do on the Tucson knives. Who else does this? Who else does this? You know, just freaking amazing. You know, so many people just don't give any attention to Tucson knives, which I find, I mean, me and other people uh, that like Tucson knives, we're always just like amazed. But then we're happy because we don't have to bid against you on eBay for these knives. So, um, yeah, we don't, we don't mind if you stay away. <laughs> uh, so, uh, let's see if we can get this lined up. Got to get my little D lined up here. Okay. Yeah. Got the D lined up. Now we got to push these through. Okay. Yikes. Let's get this on the outside before anything else falls back through or something. Baby, that's as thick as a brick, isn't it? Okay, come here. Make sure our threads are lined up and get this locked down, not too hard. And these look equal. Crap. Come on, get in there. There you go, buddy. I'll let it kind of fall back on this side so I can line it up easier there you go okay next i always feel like i'm putting a pocket clip screw in here but i'm not i mean because the pocket clips clear up there it's so weird but yeah you're right it's not very deep carry in that regard is it never had a problem though um feeling like it was hanging too high out of my pocket uh, and maybe, you know, you know, there's always that argument about having some meat there to grab onto to pull it out. So ooh, we're centered up. I mean, it's just like, um, I mean, the hardware is nice, that flat machined, really nice look to them, all number eights. I mean, there's just that feel to this knife of real fit and finish and integrity. Um, and, and hell, you ain't paying nothing for it. Well, I didn't. I know if you had to buy it somewhere else, you'd probably pay more than 85 bucks like I did. But I mean, 120, I got no problem with that if I had to pay that, um, you know. And uh, we got these locked down and good enough. Okay, we're good. Quit doing that. There we go. Okay, now let's check it out. Okay. Um, drop. Okay. Don't trust you. Don't come and bite me. 
And even if, I mean, it's not real early over the detent ball because it's hanging there. But really, you can just give it a little shake and it goes right over there. Um, so that way it keeps your thumb out of the way too. You know what I mean? Let it hit that detent and then just shake it past there. So that's fine. Almost preferable. Yeah, wow. And uh, move the lock bar aside and check for play. No. We're good. So the Tucson TS-284 Wong design in titanium is just insanium. It really is. Wow. Uh, interesting knife. I, I just think it's probably one of the more notables uh, that have come out of Tucson in a while. But they just keep getting better and better. I mean, they're just more fascinating designs that come from them. And I think I remember one guy making some comment like, well, yeah, but they're just not functional designs and stuff. Um, I don't know, man. I don't know. Wherever you want to get off the train, I don't care. But, you know, I've, I handled, I've handled thousands of knives. Um, the ergers on this are fine. You got a thumb ramp. You got jimping. You got a blade that, that cuts, okay? Um, the blade shape makes sense. I don't know why this wouldn't perform as a normal knife. I mean, it's just some people, I mean, they just want some old wet dog, the same old meatloaf every day. I like the different, uh, I like the different designs. I like changing it up. I like the artistry of knife designs and, and making things different and new. And I think if you're a knife enthusiast, um, you have a group of knives you collect and not necessarily do you drag all of them around every day. But, I mean, that's kind of the kick as well is to have a bunch of different things that are interesting. You know, kind of reflect the total breadth of the imagination and artistry and craftsmanship that's going on in the industry right now. And that's all I got to say about that. All right. And... If you like kind of what I'm doing, the wild and crazy and insane, but I do normal knives as well, but subscribe to my channel and keep up on what's going on and the knife sales that go on monthly and all that good stuff, because if you're not subscribed, you may miss out. And you know what we do here? We love them knives, so you guys stay sharp.